Welcome to the second installment in my guide on how to write for orchestral instruments. Last time we were looking at stringed instruments like the violin, this time we're looking at brass instruments. I think a lot of people think that all you have to do to get a note out of a brass instrument like a trumpet is to blow into it. But if you just blow into a trumpet, all you'll get is this. To actually get a note out of the instrument, you have to pierce and buzz your lips in a very particular way called embouchure, which sounds like this. Embouchure is the particular way that a brass player buzzes their lips into the mouthpiece. This buzzing, when done right, resonates the air in the tube of the instrument, creating a pitch. So the embouchure creates the resonance inside the tube, but it's the length of that tube, the length of that column of air, that dictates which pitch we hear. So to change the note that we're hearing, brass instruments have these valves, or in the case of the trombone, a slider, to change the length of the airflow and therefore the note. The valves on the instrument are literally changing the flow of the air through different pipes and that changes the note. That's correct, yeah. yeah. So uh, the inside of each valve, once you unscrew it, you can just kind of softly take it out and you'll see that there are different holes uh, for different sort of avenues for airway, different right. directions. And that will link up the valve to different pipes. Right, that effectively change changing the length of the instrument. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, or the airflow. But it's not like each valve on the trumpet, for example, gives you one note it's a little bit more complicated than that. Instead, each combination of valves, each potential airflow length, gives you access to one harmonic series worth of notes. I think a lot of people think that, much like a keyboard, like a piano keyboard, each button on the trumpet gives you one note and you just walk up and down them. Right. But you've only got three buttons. That's right, yeah. So the way that it works is that, if you didn't hit any of the buttons or the valves, yeah you only have access to what's called the harmonic series. That's right, yeah. Which is a almost like a big chord spread out like an arpeggio. Yes. So could you just play us the notes you have access to if you didn't play... No vowels. Yeah. Any vowels, exactly. <laughs> Without changing any vowels, you get one harmonic series, yes. one set of notes. Yep. The whole point of the valves is to effectively change the length of the horn. Yeah. So you get a different harmonic series. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So could you now play one harmonic series and then change to, to another, another with yeah, the valves? Cool, yeah, yeah. Cool. So I'll do the original one, then slip down a second. Yeah. Okay. And then that would keep going for seven different harmonic right. series. And that is literally how you access every note you have. Absolutely. And you yeah. sort of have to just memorize which ones are where. So all of the notes that a brass player may want to play aren't laid out in nice consecutive order like on a musical keyboard, but instead scattered around various harmonic series that the brass player has to memorize. Perhaps the easiest way to understand this is to think about the simplest brass instrument we could have, a bugle which is literally a horn with no way of modifying the length of the airflow. So it's like a trumpet with no valves. This means that the bugle can only access one harmonic series worth of notes. So to access the different notes, there's no buttons or valves or sliders. It all comes down to the position of the player's mouth, their embouchure and their airflow. There are no valves on this like there are a trumpet. So the way that you change the notes is by changing how fast your lips are vibrating. Low note. High note. You can get all kinds of different notes by... So all brass instruments access their different notes in the same way that the bugle does by adjusting the embouchure, the buzzing of the lips, to access different notes in the harmonic series. The difference between the bugle, though, and other brass instruments is that whereas the bugle can only access one harmonic series because it can't adjust the length of the airflow, other brass instruments can change their airflow by means of the valve or slider to access different harmonic series and therefore a whole range of notes. 
So that's how brass instruments make their sound. Now let's take a look at which brass instruments we're likely to find in the brass section of an orchestra. A typical orchestral brass section will include four French horns, two to three trumpets, two tenor trombones, one bass trombone, and one tuba. Across these different brass instruments, we're not just offered different tones and timbres, but each instrument has its own range. An important thing to bear in mind as well with the range of brass instruments is that, unlike fixed tuned instruments like the piano, the highest note a brass instrument like the trumpet can play is not set in stone. So with brass instruments, there's an officially acknowledged highest note in yes. its range. Yes. Which would be what? Uh, it's D6 on the trumpet. D6. Could you give us that note? Right, so that's the sort of official highest note. Yeah, so if you were charting on something like Sibelius, if you were to go above that note, the note would then turn red. Right. So, yeah. Mm. But depending on the player and their ability, mm -hmm. you can go higher than oh, that. Oh, many can, yeah. yeah. At a professional level, most most can at least reach the G. Right, know? okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what would comfortably, how much higher than the official high note, highest note do you think you could go? I could work out the way as uh, with semitones, if that's... Yeah, yeah, let's do it, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and that's then, you know, with, that, with the warm-up I could get higher yeah, than that. So it's so, a yeah. physical exercise. Yeah, that, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And what is it physic physically that you're doing? Getting more air behind it? You're or? trying to really control the airflow right. and trying to really sort of shorten the, the width of the air that's coming through. So right. your tongue is right up to the, close to the top of your mouth. You're trying not to squeeze the lips too much so that you stop the airflow coming through, but you need to put enough pressure on so that you can get the higher notes. And, right. You kind of figure out your way of doing the yeah, higher notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a few trumpet players that can play much higher than that, and they say that it's because they've got a gap in their teeth, <laughs> so they can get the the, the sort of um, size of a pinhead yeah, sort yeah. of airflow wow. through, sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So these are the brass instruments found in a typical orchestra, but there are other brass instruments that don't feature in the standard orchestral lineup. For example, the euphonium. Yeah. the cornet, and the flugelhorn. As you can see, there are many different variations on the basic brass instrument idea, and each different brass instrument offers a slightly different timbre and tone. One of the biggest factors in the type of timbre a brass instrument will produce is down to whether that instrument has a predominantly conical bore or cylindrical bore. The bore is basically just the tubing, the interior chamber of the instrument. Some brass instruments, like the trumpet and trombone, have a cylindrical bore. So basically the tubing remains at a constant cylinder-like diameter throughout, apart from, of course, at the very end where it flares out. This cylindrical bore gives these instruments a brighter, more brilliant tone. This is in contrast to the other type of bore, the conical bore, which instead of staying at a fixed diameter, gradually widens out in a cone shape. The cornet, French horn, tuba, euphonium, and flugelhorn all have a conical bore, and this gives these instruments a more mellow, subdued tone. When a bright, loud instrument like the trumpet wants to play with a smaller ensemble, something they can do to alter the timbre and volume of the instrument is add a mute to the front of the horn. There are various mutes that a brass player can attach to the front of their instrument to alter and mute its tone. Here's a clip of Paul the trombonist demonstrating a variety of trombone mutes. Writing music for brass instruments is similar to writing music for strings, in the sense that each instrument in the ensemble can only play one note at a time, they're monophonic. So to play a chord, for example, the notes of that chord must be shared out across the different instruments.
Now, for more information about writing this multi-part harmony for orchestra, check out my video I did last month on writing for strings, because the idea and technique is basically the same. Something though that you do have to consider when composing for brass, that you don't have to consider when writing for strings, is that brass instruments are transposing instruments. A transposing instrument is when the player reads the music in a different key than the key the music is actually sounding in. For example, if I wrote a C on the stave for the trumpet player, although they're reading a C off the page and in their head they're thinking about a C, the note that they actually play is a B flat, because the trumpet transposes down by a tone. It's the trumpet in B flat. The trumpet is a transposing instrument, yeah. which means that when you play what you think of as a C, yeah. it's not actually what is widely considered a C, no. you know, I would hear it as a B flat. That's right. When you do that, you are literally thinking in terms of C major, right? That's, That's right, yeah. Does it ever get confusing when you're interacting with other musicians? How would you oh, do that? Oh, 100%, yeah. yeah. Especially on jazz gigs, you know. Right, yeah, notoriously yeah. on jazz gigs, there'll be a few tunes that you've not played before mm. and people will throw charts at you or they'll be shouting chords at you. So they'll be saying, oh, you know, we've got to play E7 and then in your head you're like, oh, okay, F sharp 7. Oh, and right. Then, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're transposing on the fly sometimes. Absolutely, yeah. And sometimes you actually have to read notation uh, and transpose it as you play it. Uh, site transposition. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, Very yeah. confusing. Yeah, yeah, it can be. <laughs> but the reason that you have that whole system is to make it easier to switch between different trumpets in the that's same family. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So um, you ha the B flat trumpet is the most common one, um, and that has its tuning. But you also get soprano trumpets in E flat as well. So meaning that the C is tuned to E flat on the piano, but the valve positions will always be the same right. depending on what is written on the manuscript. So your fingers go to the same locations to get the same notes regardless of the size of the instrument. Yeah, or the tuning. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. the benefit of it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, cool. it's universal, the valve combinations. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Last time when we were talking about strings and how to write for them, we said how there was two main techniques that a strings player can do to get a sound out of the instrument. With brass instruments, there's less variation in technique there. There's only really the one main technique, but there is still space for a brass player to vary their tone. So on trumpet, there's mainly just the, the one technique you use for most applications. That's right, yeah. But there is um, a few other sort of more specialist techniques, one of which is flutter tonguing. Yeah. yeah. Could you give us a demonstration of how yeah, that sounds? Yeah, so it's kind of used a lot on like jazzy and bluesy sort of things. So instead of getting a clean note like, you can kind of roll your R's inside your mouth as if you would with a, a different accent or something. and. An instrument that is often incorrectly labelled as a brass instrument is the saxophone. Despite being made out of brass, the saxophone is not a brass instrument, because the definition of a brass instrument isn't down to the brass material that the instrument's made from, but instead down to the method by which the sound is produced. A more precise name for the brass instrument family is labraphones, instruments that produce sound by vibration of the lips. By this definition, it actually means that some brass instruments, some labraphones, are not actually made from brass. Instruments like the Alphorn, the Serpent, and the Didgeridoo. These are all instruments that require embouchure to produce a tone and therefore are labraphones, brass instruments. So that is the brass instrument family. Next time we'll be finishing our orchestral mini-series by looking at the woodwind section of the orchestra. 